to ask my standard opening question to you, since we all know who you are. <laughs> what, what's the opening question? It, it's tell us who you are and why we're speaking with you. Oh. I still want to know. I'm, who are you and why we're speaking with you? I'm Stanley Tucci, <laughs> promoting my new cooking book. Uh, <laughs> I had a story in the New York Times about a week ago where I was making meatballs. <laughs> you do look like Stanley Tucci. I you? get mistaken for him dozens, if not hundreds of times a year. I've signed autographs for him many times. Uh, and yet we've never met. Um, no, I'm David Escoer, uh, creator of the show Da Vinci's Demons, which you guys don't know much about yet. This is our very first sort of four-way foray into the world. We're coming out, we're airing in April. Uh, to, April of next year? Yeah. We're still filming. Uh, and we're premiering uh, our very first trailer here at Comic-Con today, which you guys will get to see. Can, can you talk a little bit about the show and why Leonardo da Vinci? Yeah, I I was approached by, um, well, to be totally frank, a, uh, after Flash Forward went down in flames, I was very disheartened by television and told my agents I didn't want to do any more TV, but I'd never done cable before, and they said, why don't you try something in cable? They back the creators more, there's less bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so uh, they said Stars and BBC Worldwide want to meet with you. BBC Worldwide is a new studio wing of BBC. And I met with them and they said, would you be interested in doing a historical show? I said, oh, I've never done anything historical. Why historical? Because his historical stuff does well overseas. And I said, well, I'm not, I don't think I'd be good at doing a kind of dry docudrama. And they said, no, 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 we want you to do a sort of revisionist take on history, the Batman Begins version, for lack of a better word. And so we talked about various figures. We talked about Cleopatra and Genghis Khan and other people. And then we quickly settled on Da Vinci and realized that no one had ever done a show about him, that he's been a kind of supporting cast member in Assassin's Creed and other things, but no one's ever done a show about him. And so I said, let me do some research on Da Vinci, and I came back a couple weeks later, and I just said, oh, I, I can't believe no one's ever done a show about him. Um, he's the most well-recognized figure in history other than Christ. If you ask anybody, they're kind of obsessed with Da Vinci. And what I love about the guy, aside from being, you know, people think he's an amazing artist, and certainly he was, but he actually supported himself through most of his life as a war engineer. And he was front and center in a lot of big historical events. He knew a lot of historical figures. He knew Torquemada, who started the Spanish Inquisition. He knew Machiavelli. He knew Vlad Dracul, the historical Vlad Dracul. Did, did you really know Cinderella? Learned, yeah, as soon as I learned that, I said, holy shit. So, Dracul's in our first season. Um, and part of the fun is that and he, he wasn't this dry, effete painter. I mean, he people think of him as this old guy who did the self-portrait, but you read the first biography of him by this guy named Vasari. He was tall. He was known to be a really good swordsman. He had a reputation for having a big mouth. He was thrown in prison a number of times. He was extremely critical of, like, he hated Botticelli. He hated Michelangelo. He insulted the Pope, which is why he never worked in the Sistine Chapel. He had a reputation for starting all these commissions and never finishing them. He was this bundle of contradictions. He, in a world that was incredibly violent, he was a vegetarian, but he spent most of his life being a war engineer. And I found this fascinating. He was a humanist, he cared about humanity, he hated war, and he created a ton of weapons for killing people. And the other thing that's great for somebody like myself is, you know, when we started working on Batman Begins, we realized there was a seven-year gap in Frank Miller's year one where Bruce Wayne left Gotham and then came back and started being Batman. And Chris and I said, oh my God, that should be the bulk of our movie. And Da Vinci has a similar gap from the time he was 27 to 32. There's almost no record of where he was or what he was doing. And there, historians have conflicting accounts of where he was, some as crazy as he was building war machines for the Ottoman Empire in Syria. And there's even a letter from Da Vinci himself claiming to have done that. And then the other thing that was cool about Da Vinci is at the time of his death, there were 13,000 notebook pages, and within a year of his death, 7,000 of those pages were missing and had never been found. And so in the 6,000 pages that we know about, he created the tank, the diving suit, the 
giant crossbow and the machine gun and all this shit. And I was like, well, what the fuck did he create in the other 7,000 creators? So, in a nutshell, that's the show. I have a question here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. The interesting thing about going for cable, especially right now, uh, like the Tudors and all these historical um, dramas get pretty sexy. I mean, are we going to see a sexy Da Vinci? Are we going to see sexy Michael, or, you know, uh, sexy famous historians? The... Uh, one of the things about that's fun about being at Star, like Stars is a new channel, and uh, they're not. I can genuinely say there's been no instance of censorship whatsoever in terms of showing. I mean, we do what's appropriate for the story, but whether it be violence, language, nudity, whatnot, there hasn't been. A, there's nothing we can't do, which has been very cool. Like up there with like Game of Thrones score and nudity, or. I would say so. Excellent. <laughs> so, sorry. With, with, uh, in regards to this being a historical, uh, you know, so, I've it's got not, a historical fantasy. Fantasy, historical fantasy. You said that originally stars came to you and, and said they wanted to do a historical kind of thing, right? I love your work, but you're not the first guy I would think of in terms of historical drama, drama right? What made them come to you for that? Well, first of all. Just because a person hasn't done something doesn't mean they can't do it. I mean, uh, as we all know, Hollywood loves to pigeonhole people. So if you're successful in one thing, I started with Blade, then it was like, oh, he's the go-to comic guy. And then Batman Begins, oh, and then Man of Steel, oh. So now Hollywood's like, he's just the guy to adapt comic books. But if you think about it, I happen to love history. I just hadn't done anything that was historical before. In Hollywood, historical films are a harder thing to make. I mean, they're just, it's just a genre that is harder to get greenlit in Hollywood. But historical dramas are doing well now in television, and they're popular, and historical dramas do well overseas. So it's a, to a certain extent, it's the path of least resistance. But the other thing with adapting a character like Da Vinci, the process was not dissimilar to doing Batman or Superman, because you have a really iconic figure. A ton has been written about. A ton. And you have to decide. And, and a, clearly a lot that's been written about Da Vinci isn't true or has been exaggerated. And so the process wasn't dissimilar than adapting Batman. Or well, we were talking about this with Tom, that he's essentially a real-life Tony Stark. Uh, I firmly believe that Stan and the other guys in Marvel based Tony Stark somewhat on people like Da Vinci. I mean, Da Vinci was a polymath. Da Vinci was a war engineer. Da Vinci was known to be a playboy. Da Vinci was known to drink a lot. There were rumors that he smoked heroin. You know, I mean, there's... I mean, they, they always... There's a they, lot of parallels. They always say it's compared to Howard Hughes, and it occurs to me that Howard Hughes had that same kind of mind, that same kind of outside the box, doesn't quite fit the society kind of mind. Well, I think a lot of these polymaths do. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I mean, when I was doing my research, I, I read all this stuff about Da Vinci, but I also read stuff about Alan Turing and Steve Jobs and Einstein and Oppenheimer. Because one of the, one of the, one of my theses is, is that, you know, Da Vinci was a bastard, literally. And at that time, if you were a bastard, you couldn't inherit wealth, you weren't permitted to join any of the other guilds. He was one of the most famous painters ever, and he wasn't allowed to join the Painters Guild. So how could he make his way in the world? He'd be an artist, but he, he figured out very quickly he really wanted to be a scientist. And the way to be a scientist is he made this deal with the devil, like a lot of scientists did, like Oppenheimer, like Turing. It's like, I'm going to align myself with a military-industrial complex, get a lot of money in order to create these inventions of war, but also pursue my own interests. And I thought that was something that, and Da Vinci did do that. He did it with Borgia and Sforza and the King of France. And I love the parallels between people like that and Da Vinci. And so that's kind of part of the thesis of the show. Can you uh, talk about the look of the show a little bit? We were chatting with Tom about Da Vinci vision. It's, it's, it's a modern look. Um, you'll hear on the panel who's scoring it. Uh, it's got a, the score is a modern approach. It's, um, my two DPs, one did the new Sherlock and just was nominated for an Emmy, and one did, uh, Luther, and, um, our costume designer, it's, it's a, 
I Stars has been calling it a graphic novel approach. I'm wary of calling that, having written graphic novels, because I think that's a catchphrase. But it's a it's a stylized approach to history. It's not a we've done things like we we for the costumes we've used the classical silhouettes, but we've used modern textures and things like that. It's it's not a straight. It, it makes no pretensions to be a completely historically accurate depiction of this. What's the compelling mystery arc of the series? The Sons of Mithras and the quest for something called the Book of Leaves. Google Sons of Mithras. They were a real organization. Because every, every good show needs a good mystery and a good quest. Uh, so. The Sons of Mithras, you'll be hearing more about them. You'll see some glimpses of, of them and their iconography in the trailer. Since you're not going to ask her any questions about Superman. Nope. Can I ask you a question about Call of Duty 2? Maybe. Could be quick. Can, can you oh, tell us a little bit about the basic plot? Uh, it flip-flops between two timelines, the past and the present, between Alex Mason and his son, and it's sort of about the sins of the fathers are visited upon the sons. So much, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.